Today we're making some chili. My husband and I absolutely love eating chili in the fall and winter months. It's just such a cozy, warm, delicious, hearty, and healthy food, and we absolutely love it. So here's what you need to make it. First of all, you need a pound of ground beef. You could also use ground chicken or ground turkey or something like that. Ours are in the shape of hamburger patties because we had them left over, but they're unseasoned. It's just ground beef that happens to be in circular patties. Aside from that, you also need some salt, a green pepper, a jalapeno pepper, and then for seasonings, you'll need cayenne pepper, smoked paprika, which if you can't get your hands on smoked, then just get regular, chili powder, and ground cumin. Then you'll need two onions, and for the canned goods, you'll need two eight ounce cans of tomato sauce, a can of black beans, a can of kidney beans, and a can of Rotel, which I got the mild, you could also get the original or the spicy, depending on how hot you want this dish to be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is wash and chop my veggies. Okay, now for the jalapeno. Now when you are peeling and um, cutting up a jalapeno, you need to be very careful. Do not touch your eyes. If you touch your eyes, you will be so, so sorry. Riley, my husband was making jalapeno poppers last year and um, accidentally touched his eyes in the process and it was pretty much a nightmare. So what you're doing is you're cutting it in half, cutting off the top, cutting it in half, and then you're just getting all the insides out. All the seeds and ribs. Again, you don't have to do this. If you want all that spice, you're more than welcome to. I do not want all that spice, but if you want it, then keep it. Okay, now that you have your jalapeno done, you're just gonna do the same thing. I try to make these very finely diced pieces. taking all of our little jalapeno pieces, getting them in our bowl. Looks like a couple of seeds snuck in there and that's okay. So now that we have our big old bowl full of chopped onion, a chopped green pepper and chopped jalapeno, it's time to saute that on the stove with our ground beef and that will be the start of our chili. All right, so I have a big pot sitting on the stove over medium heat and I'm just gonna go ahead and put my, since mine are in patty form, I'm gonna go ahead and put my ground beef down here in the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna wash my hands and then I'm gonna come back and add salt and pepper and um, all of my peppers and onions. Okay, so I'm gonna salt and pepper. This ground beef. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work on breaking it up in the bottom of the pan. Now once you have your ground beef mostly broken up, what you're gonna do is add in your onion and pepper mixture. You don't wanna wait until your beef is all the way brown. You want them to cook together. That's what gives it that really delicious flavor. So once everything's in there, I like to salt and pepper the onions and peppers. And then you're just gonna mix everything up and let it saute together. Once it's good and mixed up, you can kind of let it sit and just kind of move it around every couple of, you know, 30 seconds, every minute or two. You're just kind of wanting everything to saute. You want the uh, meat to get brown and cooked, obviously, and you want your onions to get to a point where they're nice and soft. All right, everything's looking pretty much done here. Um, our onions are nice and soft and tender, so are the peppers. The beef is browned, so what I'm gonna do is drain 
um, the excess grease out of this pot. You can see it's kind of down at the bottom there. And then from there, I'm going to add the next set of ingredients. Now that I've drained the excess grease, I'm going to add one cup of water back into the pot. And then I'm gonna add my two cans, my two eight ounce cans of tomato sauce. My can of Rotel. This one, like I said, is mild, but you could do spicy or the original, which is kind of in the middle. So let's that get that going. Okay, now that that's in there, the next thing I'm gonna do is add in the seasonings. And then while the seasonings are getting added in, I'm, I'm bringing it up to a boil so it's at medium high heat. Um, and once it gets up to a boil, I'm gonna simmer it, add the beans and cover it for a couple of hours and that's the last step. So it really is super simple. So the first thing, the recipe calls for two tablespoons of cumin, but I really don't like cumin. Um, <laughs> it's just such a strong, strong flavor. So I usually only add like a teaspoon. You can add however much sounds good to you. And then two tablespoons of chili powder, which is about what I have left in my chili powder, so I'm just gonna add all of it. And then smoked paprika, and I'm adding half a teaspoon of that. Gives it a really good smoky flavor. And then half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And last but not least is a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a good stir. So we're gonna wait for that to come up to a boil and then we will add the beans and move on. All right, our chili is boiling here, so the very last thing we're gonna do is add in our can of black beans and our can of kidney beans. Both have been rinsed and drained. I'm gonna gently fold these in. Now, I know a lot of people don't like beans, so you can absolutely leave these out if you don't, or if you're a vegetarian and you love beans, then you could just add the beans and not add the meat. Um, I actually am someone who does not particularly care for beans. They're not, definitely not one of my favorite, my favorite foods. However, I think the flavors and the seasoning in this recipe are so good that I really like them in this recipe. Actually, it's one of the only things, the only things that I make where I add quite a lot of beans. Okay, so now that that is nice and folded in, I'm going to add a cover on and turn the heat down, way down to simmer. And I'm gonna let this simmer for one or two hours. And um, I will check back with you when it's time to spoon some out and eat it. All right, so our chili has been simmering for about 90 minutes. I did just crank the heat up a little bit um, because we're about to eat it and I want it to be piping hot, but you can see that all of our ingredients are nice and cooked and everything has just married together beautifully. So let's dish up a bowl. This recipe generally makes about four to six servings. Um, we have definitely doubled it before when we've had company over. So if you are having company over and you wanna double it, you can. Now, you can put on top whatever you like. My husband likes diced onions. Sometimes Some people like sriracha, things like that. I like a sprinkle of cheddar cheese a dollop of sour cream, and a couple of Fritos for some crunch on top. And there you have it. Delicious, easy chili for the fall.